Hey everyone, and for those of you that are new here, my name is Andrew Hess. I have been getting a, a few good bit of new subscribers, so I appreciate all of you. Um, thank you for your support if you've been supporting me for a while. So today, I've been on a little break, and I wanted to give back because I feel like uh, all of you have given me so much, so I want to give back. And I wanted to talk about Power Apps. I'm going to do a, a giveaway. It's not going to be this week. But the plan is, is I'm going to create a Microsoft form and you can put your name and your email. Now your email I'm going to keep hidden, but your name will appear. So if you want to be in the raffle, there is a chance that your name will show up in one of my videos. And so what I'm going to give away is a game. This game is a strategy game. It's an engineering game. So I think it's a very smart game for Power Apps. And the reason why I decided to give a game is because when I go to the Microsoft community calls, they're always doing games. I saw this on LinkedIn. Let me show you. I saw this on LinkedIn. I was like, really? You know, someone has, I guess, either embedded Doom or they've recreated Doom in Power Apps. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, I just saw this from Ilya Feinberg. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But um, they asked for it. You know, this person is now running Doom in Power Apps and the business case behind it. Huh? I don't know if you want to watch his video, search him on LinkedIn. Um, I did notice that. So that was my reason for giving away a game. Uh, the game I am going to give away is going to be for Steam. So if Steam is not in your country, I'm sorry. But I have a, a CD key for this game, Satisfactory. It has uh, really high reviews. It's a, a very um, well thought out game. It's about you know creating a factory. There's all kinds of brain process. This could be a good gift for a child. I, I think this is a, a great gift. Um, if you want to research more about it before you enter in the raffle, uh, you can do that. I'm not going to allow for duplicate entries. So if you have multiple emails that you want to bring to the table, I, I can't stop you from that. But only one entry per email. So the idea is to have a power app. And, but first, I'm going to have to have a way for external people to, you know, give me their email and their name. And to do that, we're going to use Microsoft Forms, right? Because Power Apps is not for external use. It's not for the public. Um, it can be, but with our license models, most business cases, you're going to want to keep it internal. Right, you know, you can embed it in power pages and do all kinds of things that maybe you don't want to do. But for our business case, we're going to create a Microsoft form. So I'm here in Microsoft Forms. And these are mostly all just, you know, test forms that I've done on different sites. What I want to do is I want to create a new SharePoint site. And this SharePoint site is actually a Microsoft team. And the reason I'm doing is a team is because a team has an Office 365 group and I want to attach my form to a group and the reason I want to do that is because when I attach my form to a group the the data lives in that SharePoint site in the document library I don't want it to go to my personal OneDrive I want the data to go to that SharePoint site so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new SharePoint site now there's a few different ways you can do this You can just go to SharePoint and do create a site. Now, if this is not available for you, um, there are other ways. And I'm just going to create a new site, and I'm going to call it a giveaway. And, um, yeah, it's going to be private. Um, my sites are almost never public. And um, we'll just keep all the address and everything the same. So we can see down here in the bottom, I can just click Add Microsoft Teams, click Continue. Um, we're going to bring all this stuff into Teams. Just going to do the recommended, create a new team. Uh, this is just, you know, one way that I do it. Now we can see here in Microsoft Teams, if we're not looking at my other Teams, we have a new blank team here. It's called uh, Giveaway on the left-hand side. All of this is just um, test data, you know, just test stuff that I've done before. Pay no attention. My new team here is called Giveaway, and it has a general channel. And in the files, um, we can see that this is 
connected to our SharePoint site. So if we go to site, we can pull up our SharePoint site. All right, so we can tell that a site is connected to Teams when there's a team symbol here in the SharePoint site. So if you notice this little team symbol, this site is connected to a team. So let's go back to forms and let's see if my new group will show up. So here it is at the very bottom called giveaway. Sometimes it, it, it has had a delay for me. I, I, I don't know. Um, there was no delay this time. So I'm going to create a new form in my group here. And I'm going to create a new group form. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want the data to live in my SharePoint site. If you do not do a group form, it's going to go to your OneDrive. So I'm going to create a new form. Um, We're just going to say Andrew Hess giveaway registration, right? We're going to add a new text field. And the first question is going to be, what is your name? And then enter your answer. And then the next, we're going to say, what is your email? And basically, that's all I'm going to ask is, what's your name? What's your email? That's all I really care about. Um, if you want to send me a question, should we add that in here? Um, I'll just leave that for now. Maybe we'll do another form in the future if you guys want to send me some questions. Okay, so now if we want to open this form up to the public, you can come up here to the right side here, and you can go to settings. And we can say, you know, who can fill out this form? Only people in my organization? No, no. Specific people? No. Anyone can respond. We want anyone to respond. And we're going to accept responses and um, allow receipt, get email notification. Maybe we'll allow receipt after responses. So let's do that. I'm not going to make this public yet. We're going to wait for another video. This video is going to be um, focusing on the, the functionality. And so I'm just going to go ahead and preview. What is my name? Andrew Hess. A has five four three work at hotmail.com and I'm just going to submit one in here and see right here now you see that we can print or get um, PDF answers submit another response I, I'm pretty sure I can turn off that but for right now since I'm testing I'm not going to turn that off ABC at test.com ABC name. So I'm just going to put some responses in there, right? I, I want a few in here. And I think I want about 10. So I'm just going to, you know, fast forward through this for you. All right, so I have a few responses in there. Let's go to my SharePoint site. So we'll go to my new created SharePoint site in the documents. We're going to see here, this is the data behind my form. It's now living in the SharePoint site. So I'm just going to check it out, open it in Excel. And we can see right now I have 10 responses. So the emails are anonymous right now because um, it's outside of our organization. But I'm asking for your email. So in order for you to win this giveaway, I'm going to need your email. And that's how I'm going to pass it to you. So we have a few in here. And we also have an ID. So the ID is very important for me because this is how I'm going to calculate the random number in Power Apps. So let's go back to Power Apps. All right, we're in Power Apps. And I thought of a few different ways to do this. And in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the like the back, back end of this Power App. And then uh, the next um, video, I'm going to do the front end. We're going to make it look beautiful, UI, UX. But for right now, what I want is a text label. So we'll put a text label here. And I'm going to want a couple timers. Because I want this to look cool. I don't want this just to print out one number. I want this to be, you know, interactive. I want it to be almost like a game. Maybe even like a slot machine. Like we, and then like, ding, 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 and pulls out all the numbers. I would love for it to be like that. So I'm going to pull out a couple of timers. And then we're going to do, I think, a gallery. I think I'm just going to do a gallery. So 
So that's in layout, a vertical gallery. Now someone put this uh, question in my, um, in one of my videos. They were like, why don't you just change the layout? You know, when I first started Power Apps, all these layouts weren't available. Isn't that funny? So I would actually go in here, delete the picture and stuff. It's just habit. But you can now just go into layout and change the title. It's it's habit that I had with Power Apps before all this new functionality um, was available. So we have here a, a blank um, gallery. We have a couple timers. Now what I want to do is I'm going to create another. I'm going to create a button, and this is going to collect our data for us. And we need to have a data source of that Excel sheet. So, you know, some people say, oh, never do Excel in Power Apps. Well, in this video, we're gonna use Excel as a data source in Power Apps because that's the smartest way to do this here. So I'm gonna search for Excel, Excel Online Business, yep, my SharePoint questions. We're going to choose the data set so it's going to live in a group called uh, what did we call it giveaway here so giveaway in the document library is our giveaway registration choose the table table one so this is all out of the box this is just how it came um use unique column from excel and that's going to be id okay so we've now created a connection to that Excel sheet from Forms. So Forms creates an Excel sheet automatically. Once you submit one, one item into your form, it's gonna create a, a table. And we're connecting to that table through Power Apps. So we can probably look at straight at that data right now. So when I attached that data source, everything went anonymous because it went to email. It's actually what we want is, let's do name. Maybe not name this item, the ID. That'll work. That'll give us all 10, right? So we should have 10. And then we'll pull in this item dot, what is your name? It looks like I put in an email there on accident. And then the other one is this item dot, what is your email? So it looks like I did one of them backwards. That's okay, this is just test data. Pretend with me that I did not mess up. So we can check out the Excel data, right? So if we check out the Excel data, we can see I made a mistake here. I, I can just fix this real quick. ABC name, ABC at here.com. Okay, so I now have fixed that. We can go back to Power Apps, refresh, and that should fix here. So that fixed our, our data in the background. All right, so we have um, a list of 10 items, and we have name, and we have email. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to reproduce a random number. I want a random number, and I'm going to use these 10 timers, and I just don't want any random number. What my idea was, I wanted to do a random number, a random number of times. So it's like, tick, 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 tick. so it's like ticking. So I want the timers to actually do this, and we're going to do this every 1,000 for the duration. I believe that's one second. So 1,000 milliseconds um, is one second. Every one second, it's going to work on these timers. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to use two timers. You could probably do this with one timer, but I'm just going to do this with two timers just for Power App's sake. It might run into issues if it was um, one timer. I'm just going to do two timers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a, a random number. Um, and it's going to be ran between 0 and 10. Well, we're, there's no 0, so we're going to do 1 and 10. So we're going to have a random number between 1 and 10. We're going to change that to a variable later on when we find the min and max of my gallery. 
of the ID, but I'm just going to do right now with numbers. And then what I'm going to do after, so on the timer end, we're going to find a random number, and then we're going to update context. We're going to turn the timer to false. So every time this timer runs, we're going to set a variable timer to false. But we're also going to set variable timer, variable timer 2 to true. And that's so the second timer starts. Okay? And, and bear with me. And then what I want to do is I want a count. Variable count. And we're going to do variable count plus 1. So we're just going to get a count. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Every time this triggers, it's going to count. All right, so now let's do the second timer. For the second timer, we're going to set a variable random one, uh, ran between 1 and 10. So that's the same as before. But this time, I'm going to update context variable timer true. So that's the first variable. So that's here. We're going to set that one to true. And then we're going to set the one that we're on, on context variable timer 2, to false. And then we're going to count again. Update context variable count variable count plus 1. So we're counting again. So pretty much these are just opposites. If we click on one, we can see it's false, then true. But each of them find a random number and each of them count. So true, false, false, true. Now I want to have a way that these start. Now the second one is going to start by variable timer two. So every time variable timer two is true, this one's gonna start. So the start for timer one is going to be if var count less than or equal 100, then variable timer, else it's false. If it's less than 100, it's going to be either true or it's going to be true because that variable timer is going to click, click in. It's going to say true, false. So let's let's take a look at that. Let's put in two more labels. Text label. So this is variable timer. And this is variable timer. To, it looks like I have, so this should actually be two. So that was a mistake I made. We want to write that out. Variable timer two. Let's take a look at this one. All right, so it's spelled out here and it's spelled out here. Okay, so now we figured out our problem. In my collect button, which is just a test button right now, I, I want to reset both of my timers. So I'm resetting my timer one to false and my timer two to false. All right, so now I'm gonna try this out. So when I press play and I hit the first timer, true, false, true, false, true, false. So these two timers are working off of each other. And this is gonna run up to 100 times to a count of 100, although I'm not clearing my count. So let's take a look here. We have variable count, so we can see it's ran 29 times, right? This is my variable count. So when I click it, counts 30. Oh, let's make sure my variables are, are cleared out. So when I click it, 31, 32, 33, 34. So it's going back and forth, back and forth. And that's what I want. Okay? So now, let's lower the, the duration. Let's put this down to 200. So you can see over here on the right side, the duration. Now I'm setting to 200. And then I'm going to clear it. I made this collect button clear my variables, back to, both back to false. So here we go. Boom, 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 boom. So now every... 200 milliseconds, it's going to run 
100 times. Oh, went to 102. <laughs> let's, let, let's fix that too, okay? So that's probably because on the start of this one, we have variable this. On the start of this one, variable timer two. Okay, and I wanna reset this number here too. So you can see on my collect button, I have this resets my timer, this resets my timer. I also want to update context variable count to zero. So let's restart my count too. All right, so my, all my variables are false. My count is zero. Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see if it goes to 100. I got some coffee here. Got some coffee. Hopefully this stops at 100. One oh one. One oh one. So I'm not gonna think about it that hard. I'm just gonna change this to ninety nine. Because we're gonna make that a random number two. And I'll just run it one more time. Just let's just see if it hits a hundred or if it's let's just watch and see if it hits a hundred. If you like my, my cup here. I do not care. All right, so we're waiting for this to hit 100. All right, it hit 100 perfectly. All right, so now on my items table, I have table one. So we're going to say filter my items table when on table one, when ID equals variable what is, is it rand one rand one and we do run into a delegation issue oh because one is a text and one is a so we'll do value of id and the value of rand one it doesn't like the value of id let's see if we change that back so still it doesn't like it. So because it doesn't like that, what I'm gonna do is on my collect button, I'm gonna create a collection. Collect, um, uh, collection giveaway. But before we collect, we're gonna say for all, uh, table one, Put that here. Okay, so for all my table one, we're gonna collect giveaway and we're gonna collect ID as ID. So let's make sure I got everything right. Okay, that's correct. ID is ID and then we want, um, what is your email as, uh, what email? And then we have what name? is going to be, what is your name? All right, so we have now collected for all table one. All right, so now in here, instead of table one, we're gonna say collection giveaway. All right, and this is now what name? And here is what email? And what's wrong here? It still thinks that ID, the value. There we go. Now we have it working. So now I can say the value of ID is equal to the value of random one. So now we're gonna be, oh, we gotta clear our collection. This has got to be clear call giveaway. So every time we click that button, it also clears it. All right, so we have one. Hit the button. 
and this is how I'm going to give away, right? And we're going to make this look better next time on our next Power App. And um, I'm sure you could use this at work, right? Like, who knows, maybe you have some kind of raffle or giveaway. This could totally be used in a business scenario. And we're going to wait for it to hit uh, 100 times. Okay, hit 100 times. So now what I'm going to do is the variable count. We're going to do another RAND between, um, let's do 50 and 99. All right, and then we're going to do that here too. I'm going to leave this one as 100. So that way, there's a random here, but this one is 100. So let's go. Boom, boom. Oh, we got to reset. Let's reset. All right, run again. Boom, 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 boom. And we'll see our count is no longer going to always be 100. <clears throat> so we're doing random on top of random. There it is. It stopped at 76. So um, that's how I'm going to run this. I'm going to hide email though, right? I'm not going to show everyone's email. Don't worry. But I will have your name. So whatever name you put there, and look, if someone puts a bad name on there, I'm going to hide it from my video. I'm not going to allow, you know, any profanity or anything on my video. This is not going to be live. I'm not going to allow you to put in wrong names. So please keep this clean. It's Power Apps. Let's have fun. Next week, what I'm going to do is we're going to make this look pretty. Um, we're going to do some UI, UX. Um, we're going to make this look awesome. So I just wanted to go through, you know, kind of the back end, how we're doing it. We're going to do a Microsoft form. It's going to be open to the public. I'm going to give you the link in my next video. And then we're going to give out a, a free game. And you can give it to your kid. I, I do think this, this game is um, child friendly. It's a learning game. Um, if you want to research more about it, it's called Satisfactory. I just want to say thank you, everyone who's been watching me, who's been supporting me. It's... It's way more than I thought. You know, I thought, okay, maybe I'll get a thousand subscribers someday, but I don't know. I, I keep growing. So I want to give back to you guys. And as I grow more, I, I'll give back more. Um, you know, uh, that's the point. Maybe next time I'll give away some kind of software or something. Um, we'll figure it out as long as it's easy for me to give away. And as I grow, I'll, I'll keep giving out and we'll have a, if you celebrate the holidays, um, we'll have a wonderful holiday. I just want to say thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Next week, we're going to do UI UX of this Power App.